Hi, everyone. It is still June 7, 2021. This is part four of Is China Preparing to Attack the United States? And in fact, China has been attacking the United States. Unconventional warfare ongoing, uh, continuing right as I speak. Part four is the ties between Black Lives Matter and China's Communist Party. I will have a part five showing the similarities between Black Lives Matter as well as Antifa, their tactics and their goals, the similarities to Mao's Red Guard, the ridding of the four olds in the Cultural Revolution in China, the four olds uh, culture, habits, ideas, and customs. And once you understand even just a little bit of history, you begin to see, wow, okay, we have a cultural revolution taking place right here. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get bloodier. And, well, listen to this. This was at the... uh, in. Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. And as always, we push in death to white supremacy. That's right. That's right. Death to capitalism. That's, That's right. right. Death to imperialism and death to fascism. Yes. Yes. We push in an eye for an eye. Yeah. A tooth for a tooth. Yes, sir. A head for a head. Goddamn and right. a life for a life. Now. Yes, These demons of white supremacy bust us upside the head and brought us over here to pick cotton so they can get rich, so they can get wealthy. That's what they did. But I would like to tell you, even though you are not in Africa, Africa was born in you. Now. Africa was born in you. Now. Now we did this powerful historical event. We must not let it stop right there. We must look deeply into the so-called black-on-black violence, the community violence. The fear, the self-hatred, which tricks us to fight each other, which tricks us to gangbang. No. We must go into our hoods, the hoods, not outside, the real hood, and teach those hoods, teach those DDs, teach those white lords, teach those blood, teach those crips, that they started off revolutionary. You must understand that they put us through vicious suffering. This is oppression. And when we defend themselves, when we defend ourselves, once they die, we must understand we can never give them the pain that they gave us. So once they get buried, Khalid Abdul Muhammad taught us, once they are buried, we must bury them, dig them up, and kill them again. Bury them. Dig them up and kill them again. Bury them! Bury them! Dig them up! Dig them up! And kill them again! Kill them again! Kill them again! again. 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 Black power. Ashay! That should concern everybody, especially when they're talking about bringing in the gangs, the bloods, the crips, and teaching them that they were born revolutionaries, so they're joining with the gangs. Okay, white people need to be killed, buried, dug up, and killed again. I want you to listen very carefully to this video that was actually censored on Vimeo. Removes video showing ties between pro-China group and Black Lives Matter founders. Uh, um, Here, it's six minutes long. Listen. BLM leaders are closely tied to... Sorry about the volume. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The Chinese Communist Party. The main connection is through Asians for Black Lives which is controlled by the San Francisco-based Chinese Progressive Association, or CPA, 
I've been honored and humbled to throw down with folks um, over the last seven, eight months in the name of Black Lives Matter. Um, and I've been really humbled by our co-conspirators, um, Asians for Black Lives. The CPA is the Communist Party of China's main West Coast support group. Pam Ta Lee is an Asian for Black Lives member and a CPA leader. I'm the chairperson and a founder of the Chinese Progressive Association um, that our roots start back in the 1930s, uh, who are our, you know, our mentors. And they came out of the, uh, around the Depression, and they were socialists, they were communists. Alex Tom is a founder of Asians for Black Lives and a former chief executive officer of the CPA. There is a part of the left that has always been really um, curious and, and lifting up the role of China. So that's, and that is like the Chinese Progressive Association was one of the first organizations to even lift up the revolution in Chinatown, right? Our history basically is founded on people's friendship in China. In 2013, Alex Tom led a delegation of American radicals to communist China. We started to be able to have access to coming into China. So we built relationships with people in the party, activists underground, and also NGOs. In 2016, Alex Tom and CPA official Lucia Lin produced a 300-page revolutionary manual for Asians for Black Lives and BLM activists. Alex Tom has known BLM co-founder Alicia Garza since their student activist days at UC San Diego in the late 1990s. Actually, I think it was my friend Alicia Garza. Alex Tom helped Garza and fellow BLM founder Patrice Coolers form ties with the Southeast Asian Freedom Network, a coalition of Laotian, Cambodian, and Vietnamese radicals. Alex Tom, Alicia Garza, Lucia Lin, and Pam Ta Lee are all members of Left Roots, a front for the pro-communist China organization, Liberation Road. In 2014, after traveling to communist China with Alex Tom, Lucia Lin visited Ferguson, Missouri with her BLM comrade, Alicia Garza. Lin and Garza met with Liberation Road communist Jamala Rogers' Organization for Black Struggle, the Liberation Road front group that organized the Ferguson riots. CPA funds Alicia Garza's far-left voter mobilization organization, Black Futures Lab. China has had a very important role in funding left experiments. When a communist Chinese oil company got pushed back for drilling in land belonging to Ecuador's indigenous Sapara people, Pam Ta Lee helped smooth over China's public relations problems. But there's also these, these other things, these loans that are being um, made throughout uh, uh, the world from China for energy, right? And on the back here is a site that I would love for you to go to, to sign on in support for the Sephora people. They are watching this. They, they, they uh, developed this letter, and we delivered it to the Chinese consulate a couple of weeks ago, which really helped them a lot. Alex Tom is also very close to Chinese communist officials in San Francisco. And we have a relationship with the Chinese embassy. Like, we actually have so, you know, I've had to have various conversations with them about our positioning. And shares the Communist Party of China's hatred for President Trump. We just gotta stay eyes on the prize. Now, from anti-Asian violence being documented to attacks on China and defending China, to me, the main thing is we gotta get rid of Trump. Marching orders. To go beyond Trump, we must stand together in our resistance. Pam Ta Lee and Alex Tom both work closely with former CPA Chief Executive Officer Eric Marr, a longtime supporter of Communist China and Asians for Black Lives. Eric Marr is also a close ally of veteran Bay Area activist Russell Lowe who was a former office manager for Senator Dianne Feinstein. 
and an identified Chinese Communist Party spy. The Communist Party cares about U.S. race relations. Driving racial division here is an essential part of the CCP's unrestricted warfare against our nation. That should concern all who care about America. If this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. Choose freedom. Find out more at choosefreedom.io. Do you know what's happening right now, by the way, uh, in Minneapolis? Riots, looting, destruction over another, over another uh, killing by a police officer of a black man. The black man's name? Winston Smith. Winston Smith. Are you getting the connection? 1984? Orwell's 1984 main character, Winston Smith. But this is what is taking place and has been uh, ongoing for three days. Looting shows that you really care about black lives. Looting, destruction, chaos. Okay. Now, I also want to say, this has nothing to do with black people, because this is a worldwide movement. Uh, it, has, it has nothing to do with... Chinese Americans or anyone Chinese, it has to do with good versus evil, and it has to do with communism versus freedom. It has to do with the governments, not the people, though we have an awful lot of people who know exactly what they are doing. They are uh, manipulating an awful lot of people to join in, be the useful idiots to bring about a cultural, uh, a cultural revolution here in the United States. But the violence that we are seeing ha has been pretty much ongoing, ramping up, because now we have Huh, Portland, yay, two seats left open for the drive to bring Portland support to Minneapolis, hashtag Winston Smith. Um, it's, you know, what they are doing, randomly stopping people in their cars, blockading, uh, creating these blockades in traffic and this is a white woman driving, and suddenly she's surrounded by Black Lives Matter protesters. She's trying to de-escalate the shit so it doesn't get stupid. I also don't know if you know about uh, the random attacks that the violence in our country is escalating. It's only going to get worse. I mean, this is this is really not good, guys. It's not good. You know, the. Uh, Minneapolis once again. All right. So, um, 
Black Lives Matter still goes on. The painting of Black Lives Matter. Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. Black Lives Matter on the street. Okay. They're pushing this. They know that Black Lives Matter, their support is waning. Leaders are leaving because they're finally understanding that Black Lives Matter is not what they claim they are. Uh, but I digress. Yeah, I do it a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, but this is a Marxist organization. They are creating a culture, cultural revolution right here. It looks a little bit different from Mao's cultural revolution, but the similarities are rather frightening. Now, here we have Patrice Cullors, one of the founders, admitting that she is a trained Marxist. I think that the criticism is helpful. Um, I also think that it might... Um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. Super versed. And this one where Patrice Cullors in 2012 was very, very happy that one who read her book said that he felt like he was reading Mao's Red Book. Okay. Here is when she's just very excited. Wow. Wow. I want to make sure it's not too loud. You cannot get more clear, more uh, in your face, that the founders of Black Lives Matter are Marxists, communists, with each, well, I'm going to focus on Alicia Garza in a second, but Patrice Cullors and Alicia Garza, they admit it solutions. I was at the our publications table today and I was speaking to this uh, young person from Arizona who's trying to fight uh, SB 1070 and I was he, he he grabbed a book and he said it's like Mal's red book and I was like man that's what I was thinking and it was just really cool to hear him make that connection I was like how about you buy like 10 to 15 of these books and you all have like a youth like organizing group where you talk about it and you really try to engage this and we can just kind of, we need to build off of this. And so that leads me to um, my, a point that I, I actually wanted to kind of focus on today, which is um, I think I have a, a really important role in speaking to youth. I, I have, maybe it's because I came in the movement at 17 and a half, so I have like just a knack for knowing how to organize young people into this organization and kind of teach them this, this politic and then hear them now organize other people. Wow. Wow, she's so excited. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It's like Mao's Red Book. Oh, man. Here is the full speech that she gave in 2012. For those who leave me comments like, well... You took it out of context. <laughs> I would say that pretty much everything that I have posted, you don't need much context to understand that she's really excited that somebody read her book and thought, wow, it's like Mao's Red Book. So here's another... Um, video. I'm not going to play the whole thing. China's troubling ties to Black Lives Matter movement. Going on at that superb mothership for the conservative movement and also the Angelus T. Arredondo e Pluribus Unum fellow 
my, oh, my, he must have like a toilet roll for a business card. It must be so long. And he's here because you've written something quite remarkable, uh, my friend, in The Daily Signal, um, which posits, which documents connections between Black Lives Matter and certain um, Chinese, pro-Chinese organizations. Mike, welcome to America First, and tell us what you have found. Seb, thank you very much for having me on here. Um, what I found basically was, first of all, let's start with Alicia Garza, who is the founder of Black Lives Matter. She sits atop a vast a global a revolutionary empire. One of her ventures, so she... she, she and she, she's the person who is described or self-described as a trained Marxist. Ali, uh, Patrice Coulers, one of the other three founders, described her and Alicia Garza as a trained Marxist. Right. And, 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 you know, I quote her as saying that she dislikes capitalism. She, <laughs> she thinks it needs, to be, uh, it needs to be smashed and done away with. Uh, and that's what she has, she has in, in, you know, in store for us and what she plans for the United States. So two years ago, uh, almost exactly two years ago, she founds another, yet another group, another venture called the Blacks Future Lab. And if you go to the Black Futures Lab, you click on the donate button, you see that it goes to, you donate the money to the Chinese Progressive Association of San Francisco. So hang on a second. So, so one of the founders of Black Lives Matter uh -huh. has another organization. She has called, many. She has many. Many, but she has another one called right. Black Futures Lab. Right. And if you're on their website right. and you want to give her money, right. it goes to who? The Chinese Progressive Association of San Francisco. Which is what? Which is a, a, a you know, a, it's, it's, it was established in 1972 at the height of the, 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 the Cultural Revolution to push Beijing's line, to, 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 to advocate for, for the PRC, to advocate for its revolution, to advocate for its revolutionary thought. Uh, it was established uh, by uh, work. I work Quinn. I work Quinn was a Marxist, uh, another Marxist group that had ad had been advocating for the PRC since the 1950s. The People's Republic of China, right? Uh, People's Communist China. Communist so China. I, I work Quinn um, establishes the San Francisco branch of of of, uh, of, of CPA in 1972 uh, to because they they're too tainted by being communist. So they need another group that is not tainted by the label of, of Marxism or of communism to push uh, the, 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 the thoughts of the People's Republic of China. So let, let's just start for a second. So first things first, this is monumentally newsworthy that we have connections, pro-communist China organizations that have been around for 50 years are connected to Black Lives Matter, the founders of Black Lives Matter, why would why would a pro communist China organization have anything to do with uh, an, or a movement that's about justice and and stopping police brutality? Can you explain that, Mike Gonzalez? Well, as you know, because you know this, and you haven't explained it though, which is uh, the, the, Alicia Garza and Patrice Colores and Paul Tometi have Marxist plans for the U.S. They 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 think that that be, the capitalism that in capitalism, what is capitalism? Capitalism is, is private ownership, right? I, I own something which I bought with the sweat of my brow. You want to buy it. We both agree like on a price. We both walk away happy. We're in the, so, so freedom. It's another word for freedom. They think that produces inequality. Exploitation. Right. right. So, so, so since, since Marx and Engels, communists have had this big boogaboo with uh, private, you know, private... Private ownership private of ownership, property. Private ownership of property. They free think, markets. Right. They even blame the patriarchal family on this. And he, this is the patriarchal family was created for this. Well, let, let's, let's just stop here for a second. The Black Lives Matter website states that one of their missions is to target and right. dismantle the traditional nuclear family. Right. Right. Which is straight out of the 70s and 60s, isn't it? I mean, it, it, that's Weather Underground, it's SDS, it, Smash Monogamy. Th th these are old, it, old objectives, it's, it's, Mike. It, it's even older than that. It, it goes back to the manifesto. It goes back to Engels. Right, right. Engels had a big thing with the family, uh, which he got from an American uh, anthropologist who's been, whose theories on the spanner have been developed. The family is bad. Yeah, the family is bad. Uh, you, you need the, 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 the big extended... The mid commune. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it takes a village to raise a family. Um, so, so basically, that is you know, this is this is where we are. 
And by the way, there's another venture of Alicia Garza, which is the Movement for Black Lives, which states, it goes even further on its website, that it is against capitalism. But, but Alicia Garza herself has said this. She has acquitted her is saying this in a 2015 uh, meeting with a group, a, a, a big, large, important group of, of global Marxists saying, look, we need to get rid of capitalism. So let, let me ask you the, the functional question, the so what question, the, the Leninist what is to be done question. What do you respond to those who say, okay, maybe the people at the top, maybe the founders hate America, hate capitalism, uh, are linked to communist China, to the regime in communist China, but the majority of people who are on the streets don't know any of that. Does that matter functionally? Well, it, it doesn't matter, and I actually, I, I do believe that the majority of people protesting do not have these goals, do not share these goals, but I believe they're being manipulated. You know, a paper just came out earlier this week that tied 95% of the riots yes. to, to BLM, to sort of some form of BLM. Right. And again, let's not forget, we're talking about a vast revolutionary empire, which includes BLM, which includes Black Futures Lab, which includes the movement for black, uh, for, for black lives. Um, and, and they... Which includes government officials, which includes leaders of countries, which includes mainstream media, which includes celebrities. No matter how talented these women are, no matter how smart they are, these three, Patrice Cullors, Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, they could not have done this without people behind the scenes helping them. So, um, growing global support for U.S. protests over killing by police, China Daily. China Daily. The Chinese government is quite happy with what's going on. Words cannot express adequately the sense of dismay, regret, and grief caused by the death of George Floyd and others as we all cope with the long legacy of failures by government and the U.S. criminal justice system to address the scourge of racial in inequity, bigotry, and violence in this society. Doug Chan, the president of the Chinese Historical Society of America, understand China's Communist Party rules an awful lot of organizations, NGOs, uh, all over the world. Asians for Black Lives, a group in the Bay Area, denounced the gross displays of state-sanctioned police violence, members of the Chinese Progressive Association joined thousands of others at a kneeling demonstration on June 1 in front of San Francisco City Hall to demand justice for all black families brutalized by police. The kneeling, the apologizing for the color of one's skin, white people apologizing, cancel culture, it's all very similar to Mao's Cultural Revolution. And for sure, the, uh, to exterminate capitalism, well, that is literally the same. But when you have the China Daily coming out, um, now, here they are talking about, do you really think that the Chinese government cares about black Americans? All right. Um, here's Alicia Garza, Black Lives Matter co-founder. Maine, Maine, Maine can be a leader in dismantling white nationalism. Really? Maine. <laughs> uh, I think Maine is number three in terms of uh, its residents. I think it's 97, no, maybe 94, 94. I think Vermont is number one, New Hampshire number two, Maine number three, 94% white. How is this possible that Alicia Garza in Maine becomes the key speaker at an event 
uh, Maine's People's Alliance. Okay, Maine, I've said this before, it's gone communist already. It's got its uh, tyrant, just like Oregon. Um, but I want you, uh, you can read the article, but I want you to listen to uh, what Alicia Garza now here she gets a standing ovation. Now, there's no way that this could have taken place because there's a lot of government officials there. They're joining. They're joining Black Lives Matter government officials, those who are bringing in communism to the good old U.S. of A. Now, here they say, here she says, some of you are like, no, 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 it's a moral struggle. What we have to do is show that we are better than this. I want to challenge us to think bigger than that. Sure, we need to be nicer to each other. We need to be better to each other, sure. But it's not just be good to one another. It is to change power and how it functions. Without changing power, transforming power, we cannot express our values or our morals. Nobody challenged that statement. You can't express your values or morals without changing the power structure. Are you that controlled by other people that you can't express your own morals and values? Okay. They want to change the power and how it functions to a communist state. Listen to just a few, maybe even just a couple of seconds of Alicia Garza in 2016 speaking at another event. Um, I want to start off by talking a little bit about this moment, but I always think it's important to root this moment in history, because we don't want ahistorical narratives floating around out there. Uh, so the first one is maybe an obvious one, which is, maybe it's not so obvious, that Black Lives Matter is much more than a hashtag. In fact, it's an organized network in 26 cities globally. It's also intended to be a tactic to help rebuild the Black Liberation Movement. Mm -hmm. BLM, BLM. Mm -hmm. Ah. Well, if you know anything about the Black Liberation Movement, you know it is a communist movement. Okay. Um, why don't we go? I have a lot of pages open. Um, Black Liberation and the Communist International. Now, I will link below to everything if you want to read this article. It goes into the history of the Black Liberation Movement, the Fourth Congress held in Moscow. Uh, the Congress established a commission, and you know the U.S. Communists to rally a team of enlightened, young, self-sacrificing, well, I don't think I can say that word without being canceled today, um, who were to carry the message of revolution to the black masses. The Communist International should support every black movement that undermines or weakens capitalism or places barriers in the path of its further expansion. Black Liberation Movement. BLM? BLM. Well, um, here's another one, the Communist Party and the Black Liberation Movement, a history, but there's a lot in this. It's very long. History of the Modern Black Liberation Movement and the Black Workers' Congress summed up. Let me just read some of it. Uh, the mass struggle of black people burst forth 
before the black proletariat was class conscious. Consciousness of the necessity for revolutionary class struggle, a struggle against the black bourgeois. Those are the white blacks. Like Candace Owen, Owens is a, she's just bourgeois. Along with John McWhorter, uh, uh, Thomas Sowell, Carol Swain, Dr. Carol Swain, everyone who disagrees with Black Lives Matter today, which is BLM, BLM. The black Americans who disagree are the bourgeois class. And one of the reasons why the black liberation movement failed was because they couldn't rid themselves of that bourgeoisie thinking. Okay, bourgeois forces dominating the movement of the need for independent organization, which represented their class interests and could lead them into action against the imperialist system only penetrated into a very small circle of black workers in the early 60s. With each advance of the struggle, the bankrupt leadership of the black bourgeoisie and the vacillating influence of the black petty bourgeoisie became clear to the masses of black people. For almost a decade and a half of active mass struggle, every coalition and organization in the black community was led by preacher so-and-so or attorney so-and-so. They carried on negotiations with the ruling class whites for reforms, civil rights legislation, programs for housing, education, economic assistance, etc. Not a single one of these promises have been kept. Okay, this was written a long time ago. Um, these promises turned out to be simply gestures to hide the exploitive nature of the present system and the class interest of the black bourgeoisie, who knew how to use the militancy of the masses for their own selfish ends. Okay. So, the Black Panthers became the first to see through this unholy alliance. They helped expose the treacherous activities of the black bourgeoisie, who were ready to sell out black people for a few pieces of silver, raised the banner of Marxism-Leninism as the only ideology for black people, the Black Panthers. Because of the Black Panther Party, the ruling class was unable to douse the flames of the black liberation movement that many thought was already dead. The Black Panther Party made some serious mistakes, uh, responding to what they saw as the main elements in the city rebellions of Detroit, Newark, uh, Harlem, Cleveland, Watts. The Black Panther Party concluded that it was the unemployed, and semi-employed youth that were the main forces in the black community. You get them, you can manipulate them to fight. You're not going to manipulate those who are successful, those who want freedom, those who work hard, become a success, and contribute to society. Go for the ones who are fighting each other. Now, so the serious mistakes, they were unaware of the powerful black proletariat in the big industrial cities and the leading role of the proletariat in general. In 1969, the first revolutionary black workers organization of the modern era, the League of Revolutionary Black Workers, 
The League of Revolutionary Black Workers is dedicated to waging a relentless struggle against racism, capitalism, imperialism. Okay. Uh, this video is getting long, but the history is very interesting. Um, they had to rid every time they got together to try to organize something. It was the black bourgeoisie that screwed things up for them. You know, they didn't have an ideology that they could uh, create these organizations and have a foundation. There was too many intellectuals. Get rid of them, and you have Black Lives Matter, BLM, BLM. Uh, the growth of Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought among the black proletariat and the radical wing of the black petty bourgeoisie signals the waning influence of bourgeois nationalism among the advanced sector of the black population. The League, uh, there were so many different organizations with different kinds of names, black nation, uh, but the League played a key role in inspiring the black liberation movement and spreading Marxist-Leninist ideas among black workers and workers in general, as well as other progressive sectors of the population. The black liberation movement is Black Lives Matter with a different name, but this has been ongoing for a very long time. The great storm that was the mass struggle of the black masses brought forth many individuals and organizations, each claiming to represent the truth, leading black people to their, quote, final place in the sun, unquote. Most of these organizations showed the determination and fighting capacity of black people, but in the main, they have come and gone with little trace of their presence left behind. This only has proven what we've been saying all along. Only the proletariat and within the black liberation movement, the black proletariat is capable of leading all classes and strata in the final assault against U.S. imperialism and monopoly capitalism to peace, liberation, and socialism. And it goes on. You now the Black Workers Congress uh, formed in 1970. It was very difficult to tell what the Black Workers Congress was guided by. What we need was not all revolutionary theory, but Marxism, Leninism, and thought of Mao Zedong, which is the only genuine revolutionary theory in the world. Black Lives Matter is that thought. The masses of black people were tired of all the rhetoric of the black power movement, which promised them everything and gave them nothing. Indeed, the Congress saw as one of its main tasks the spreading of Marxism Leninism among the masses of black working people who were clearly ready for it. And, you know, they quote Mao, they quote Lenin, early history. Um, so when you hear Garza, Alicia Garza, say, and I am going to play it again. Sam. Also, thank you to the Left Forum for having me. Um, I want to start off by talking a little bit about this moment, but I always think it's important to root this moment in history, because we don't want ahistorical narratives floating around out there. Uh, so the first one is maybe an obvious one, which is maybe it's not so obvious that Black Lives Matter is much more than a hashtag. In fact, it's an organized network in 26 cities globally. It's also intended to be a tactic 
to help rebuild the black liberation movement. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Did you hear it clearly? Black Lives Matter is a tactic to bring about a resurgence of the black liberation movement. BLM, BLM. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to link below Build Back Better, Healthier Pledge, Black Futures Lab, Alicia Garza. Remember, on their donation page, Black Futures Lab is a fiscally sponsored project of Chinese Progressive Association, or you could read it as it is fiscally sponsored project of the Communist Chinese Party, the Communist Party in China. Okay, um, I will link below to another article. This BLM co-founder and pro-communist China group are partnering, partnering up. Here's why. Uh, uh, Alicia Garza has about 50 organizations getting donations. Another Marxist who's making an awful lot of money, just like Patrice Cullors. $90 million to Black Lives Matter. Where did it go? Everybody's still asking questions. But we know that P Patrice Cullors has quite a lot of real estate. These are Marxists, remember? Marxists. <laughs> it's a joke because the leaders sure do love their comfort. Another one. Color of change helps you do something real about injustice. And, you know, you look at this. Recent victories. Proud Boys defunded, kicked off social media. Social media sites ban Trump. Okay. Therefore, censorship. Great. Not freedom. Not freedom. Therefore, communist power control. They want, just like the Red Guards under Mao, to destroy, rid the nation of capitalism, exterminate capital. Capitalism is not the problem. In fact, of all the economic systems in the world, capitalism created a very strong middle class, unlike any other country throughout history, if we actually had a free market, capitalist system, we'd all be doing quite well. The capitalism part, we, we've been controlled for, well, certainly since the Fed uh, took control and can't remember the year, but it's been, what, 120 years, 130 years? Okay. Our money has been controlled and you give the control to people, they'll make a small group very wealthy. The middle class was brought about in the United States to create the wealth of this nation and give it to that military industrial complex and well, now we're being destroyed. The middle class is pretty much mm, decimated. So communism's coming in. And greed. Capitalism was never the problem. It's how our finance was controlled through the Fed and greed. So... Uh, here's another one, Common Council Foundation. Uh, it's very true. I mean, once you get, you know, 
even just a little bit of a foundation, historical foundation, on how communism came about in the Soviet Union, in China, in other countries. They pretty much take the same steps. They manipulate the youth. And they bring about a lot of chaos. You know, the destruction of the statues and getting rid of uh, all of our culture. This is exactly what happened under Mao. So part five will be the similarities between Black Lives Matter, Black Liberation Movement, and Mao's Red Guard. This is very serious, and it could explode this year, this year. So, I sure wish that people would take an interest in what's happening in this country and look into, you know, our history. That would be a good start, but also the history of you know, the Cultural Revolution in China, the communist takeover in 1917 in Soviet Union, and you'll see how similar uh, what the, the people experienced in those countries to what we are experiencing now. And if you know how bloody and how many people were tortured and killed. Maybe people would be motivated to do something to get this stopped. I don't know at this point. But thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. The links are below. Have a good night.